Well, hi everybody, and welcome to another little happy travellers vlog. We've had um, just a, one or two little questions about what it's like to drive in Europe, uh, specifically in Spain. So I thought I'd just go over one or two points that helped me when I first started to drive over here in Europe and down through Spain. Um, before we left uh, the UK, I was, um, I've got to say, a little bit anxious uh, when we first started, and that was when we were going from uh, Newcastle to Imuden in Amsterdam, and we were just, you know, having our first real trip uh, from Imuden right all the way up to Sweden. And one of the pieces of advice uh, I got, which really did help out, was to make sure that I stayed in the gutter. <laughs> so, as you're you're driving on the right in a in a right-hand drive vehicle, your steering wheel and your driving position should be nearest the gutter or the pavement, and not on the other side, out in the fast lane. So you always want to keep over to the edge of the road that you're seated on when you're driving. And that did really help a lot. Um, something else that uh, a lot of people said was be careful you don't go the wrong way around roundabouts. And that that got me really, really worried because you know, <laughs> you know approaching roundabouts, going the wrong way round, could, that could be an absolute disaster. Well, it's really hard to do. You, you almost can't do it if you try because the roads are, you know, they're wide, they're well laid out and they're well marked. And it was absolutely never, ever a problem. I've never tried to go the wrong way round a roundabout. It never happened. And, and I don't expect it ever will. And I've driven through um, all those countries, you know, um, in the Netherlands, right up through to Sweden, back down through Germany, um, through France, and uh, into Spain. And all the roundabouts, it just seems normal and natural to go round that way. It does take um, a little bit, maybe a little bit more concentration to make sure at first that you're driving on the correct side of the road on the right and you're keeping over to the right one of the other things that you need to be aware of is uh, the speed limits because they're <laughs> massively confusing uh, coming through France and into Spain you'd often see um, speed limit signs really close together like you, you would see 60 and 80 that's kilometers per hour so you know it, it, unless you really study what you're supposed to do i always stuck to the lower of the speed limits wherever it was marked up i always went below that because you know i'm hoping that there's no speeding fines have happened that i don't know about yet i don't think there are um going through towns as you as you come down through France and indeed into Spain and I think the Spanish are maybe a bit hotter on the speed limits I, I'm not sure I've, I've read that online um, but coming through towns you have to go at uh, 20 kilometers per hour or less which is about 10 to 15 miles an hour so you know you're going really really slow and where it's marked up 50 kilometers per hour that's about 30 miles an hour so although when you when you come out of that English driving mode you can be fooled into thinking oh 50 that's okay that's quite fast actually it feels really slow when you get it to 50 kilometers per hour that's 30 miles an hour and um, you really should do that because everybody else is doing that it's not like driving in England it's a much more pleasant experience, I have to say. And I, I've been really, really impressed with how driving is 
over here in Europe, but certainly in, in Germany, France and Spain, everybody seems to be just a little bit more courteous, less aggressive in the driving styles, um, especially coming onto fast roads, dual carriageways and motorways, you're coming down the slip road and people will move out of your way to let you in to that space. So where you've got two lanes coming down, um, you're coming onto the slip road. If there's a car in this lane, they might move out, they might slow down, they might speed up to give you a gap. But you need to be aware of how that's all going to work. You know, I've often seen, you know, when I'm coming down that slip road, people will move out of the way. And it isn't because it's a big vehicle. It, they just do it. And I've, I've started to do that as well, even though, you know, I, you know, I, I like to slow down to give people room. Maybe if I see somebody coming down and they're not going that fast, I'll accelerate a bit to get past the, the slip road. And the other thing that I did, uh, the other piece of advice um, I got from Ed, actually, thanks Eddie, uh, of Eddie and Gail fame, um, was when you're, when you're coming off of those fast motorway, dual carriageway roads, and you're, uh, especially in Germany, the slip roads coming off can be quite curly and very short. So you really need to be, um, as you approach those slip roads, slowing right down to the speed of the slip road while you're still on that dual carriageway or motorway. And usually, if they're really curvy, you want to get that down to about 40 kilometers an hour. So that's about 25 um, miles an hour. Because, you know, they, they are really sharp turns. But there you are. So that's, um, that's it about driving over here. There really is no issue. It's really, really simple. Much more pleasant experience than driving in uh, England. Uh, less aggressive. Um, the roads are bigger. There's much less traffic. So I suppose people can sort of afford to be less aggressive you know there, there's there isn't so much traffic and no traffic jams but there you are i hope that's been helpful and if it has and if you've liked that little rambling about driving in europe give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you want to continue following our journey as we travel around the uk and europe living full time in our motorhome i'll see you again soon thanks for watching